Welcome. It's been a while. May I take your order? Don't welcome us as guests and greet us as old friends in the same line. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, and this is? Uh, this is Miss Xinyun. Master? Huh? Huh. One does not recall ever revealing this form to you before. How were you able to ascertain one's true identity with such ease? I've trained and lived with Master for more than ten years. I would recognize you no matter what form you take. <gasps> you... Is something the matter, Master? Hardly. Hardly. One simply learned of your employment from your letter and came to check on your well-being. And check out the great food, too! Indeed. It's almost lunchtime. My apologies, I'm still on the clock and can't talk for very long. <laughs> well, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. Are you here for Shenhe? The lunch rush isn't in yet, Shenhe. So, I've got things covered for now. Go ahead, sit down and enjoy some time with your friends. I'll let you know if things pick up. Thank you, Chef Mao. It is just as one expected. The owner of Wanmin Restaurant is indeed a most reasonable and accommodating human. Still, the work here entails dealing with quite a varied group of people. Has this been difficult for you, Shenhe? It's been manageable so far. I sometimes run into strange people, but I have figured out a way to deal with them. Seems like you've been making progress. So by... Dealing with them, you mean... First, I try to talk sense into them. If that doesn't work, I threaten them with violence. At this point, they usually decide they are in favor of a civil conversation. Oh, uh... How should Paimon put this? Oh, a sensible plan. One is gladdened to see you integrate so well into human society. And you, Master? How have you been? Simply marvelous! Though Mount Outsong has scarcely enjoyed your presence recently, one has hardly found the pleasure of one's own company to be lacking. I see. Oh, just as expected of Master. Hm. Hm. I have missed Master quite a bit too. Even though work has been busy lately, I've already had a conversation with Chef Mao about taking some time off soon to visit Master. Oh, you did? <clears throat> Do make note of such matters in your letters in the future. There's hardly a need to keep one in suspense. Whoa, her mood shot up just like that. By the way, Master, since you are in Liyue Harbor, have you had the chance to visit Ganyu? Indeed. She is similarly preoccupied with her work. There was time only to exchange a few simple pleasantries. Ganyu told us the story of Cloud Retainer's name. It was amazing. We never knew how powerful she was before. I see. In that case, allow me to also share a story about Master's past. Oh? Is that a problem, Master? I believe this to be a good topic of conversation. No, not a problem. One was simply caught off guard. But no matter, please, proceed. One is most curious to see how much of one's own conversational prowess you possess. Master once participated in a race against Mooncarver. After Mooncarver lost, he insisted that Master's ability to fly gave her a natural edge in such a contest. In response, Master agreed to forego flying in return for being able to use one of her devices in the race. Mooncarver accepted, only to find Master with a brand new device on the day of the contest. Huh, what kind of device was it? It was a mechanical vehicle made out of iron. What was it called again? Oh, an electro-powered bicycle? Oh, you refer to the bicyclical Thunderflash mobile. One spent 49 days conceptualizing and crafting it. It need only be infused with adeptal energy, and it can cover thousands of miles in one day. 
Oh, it boggles the mind why Mooncarver ever supposed he might best me in a contest of locomotion. Though he sprinted with all his might, he could barely keep up. <sighs> Alas, the one flaw of my mechanism lay in its weakness against mountainous terrain. One was thwarted mere seconds from victory, when it was thrown off course and failed to make it across the final stretch. Truly a most unfortunate turn of events. Anyway, do go on, Shenhe. Master, that was the end of that story. Is that so? Huh. With you gone, one has seldom felt the desire to call upon those old fossils for another contest. What is a race without spectators, after all? Have you been lonely, Master? Lonely? Huh. At one's age, entire human generations come and go in the blink of an eye. Even one's own self-directed musings can span several days and nights. Tis a most foreign sentiment. The mere mention of it is preposterous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What is the reason for that look upon your face? It's nothing. It's just... <laughs> well, Paimon gained a lot of respect for you after listening to that story of you summoning the rain and everything. But all it took was a few words out of your mouth and it's like you're back to being that illuminated bird again. Paimon's just a little bit confused. Which one of the two is the real cloud retainer? To me, they are both master. One is the master that's widely revered by the people, while the other is the master that I respect and adore. Huh. One finds oneself exalted yet again with sweet words of praise and flattery of a most extravagant nature. You chose to exalt one with your words, yet you refuse to grace Mount Outsong with your presence for any extended period of time. One would almost question the sincerity of your estimations. This is not to say that your words paint an inaccurate picture. One has always lived by a single ideal. Eschew all action and abide by no rule. One does as one pleases and speaks as one pleases. Others may critique or praise as they see fit. Yet one places little weight in such judgments. She got like... What, two sentences of flattery from her disciple? And it's as if her ego is about to burst. Do you have any empty tables? Hey there, could we get another fish stew? I'm hearing more guests come in. I should get back to work. Mm-hmm. I'll try my best. 